Chris, what is our third main topic today? Third topic is from Geeky Gator. Peacemaker was obviously a giant win for HBO Max and James Gunn, and really for all of us. <laughs> I still can't believe how good this show was. Anyway, I caught a tweet from Gunn saying that the final episode of Peacemaker was the biggest single day rated show ever for an HBO Max series, and that the finale was up 44% from the series premiere. Does this prove once and for all the weekly strategy works best? All right, thanks a lot for saying that in Geeky Gator. All right, we have been talking a lot around here about Peacemaker, and for good reason. This show, considering its relative low budget, which half of the budget was spent on the cow and the final cameos. <laughs> I think I honestly think that was half of the Peacemaker budget right there. They made this show for bus fare, and they made it one of the... I, I still, now that the show is done, I will call it. This is the best DC show ever. And I include Smallville in that, and I really like Smallville. I include Doom Patrol in that, and I love Doom Patrol. I include a lot of the, the CW shows, and I like a lot of the CW shows very, very much. I think Peacemaker is the single best thing they've ever done on television, and I absolutely loved it. And we know it's been a success because the audience has kept writing in, talking about how good, how much they've liked it, how good the show has been. James Gunn has killed it. And I'll tell you what else. Warner Brothers proved that when Disney decided to part ways with James Gunn and there was a bidding war going on with every other studio vying for James Gunn's services, Warner Brothers proved that their gamble worked. Now, with Suicide Squad, the movie was great, but it did not do well at the box office, so maybe they were questioning their decision at the time. They ain't questioning it anymore. This show is a bona fide hit for these guys. As a matter of fact, the biggest they've ever had. And on top of that, the growth from its premiere to its finale was amazing. This comes to us from the folks over at Screen Rant who write the following. Both Gunn and John Cena took to Twitter to share the news that Peacemaker's season one finale broke HBO Max's record for the biggest single day release of an HBO Max original series ever. Gunn and Cena also revealed that the series viewership had grown a great deal since it first aired episode, its first episode in January, reporting that the finale's viewership was up by 44% when compared to the series premiere episode. Gunn thanked audiences for showing up each week to watch each episode as it aired, while Cena also enthusiastically thanked fans for their support, stating that he was already ready for making Peacemaker Season 2. All right, an important thing to point out here is that they were not saying that this is the biggest HBO thing ever. This didn't outdraw Game of Thrones or whatever, but this is now HBO Max. And HBO Max has already had several high-profile originals, and the fact that Peacemaker, this relatively low budget, the thing I thought the trailers looked cheap, following off as a spinoff of a film that did not do well at the box office, came out of nowhere and became their number one viewed thing for a single day ever in that finale. And that is massive and monstrous. And well, congratulations to James Gunn and everybody Woo! over at Peacemaker and HBO. Fantastic. Well done. Well deserved. Not to mention, James Gunn just got engaged. Yeah. He's marrying Harcourt. And whenever a fucking nerd gets to marry out of his, you know, weight class. All nerds around the world raise a glass. Well, no. And James, James I, Gunn is punching out of his weight class. Uh, his Guardians of the Galaxy movies made a half a billion and a half dollars. I mean, he's I don't care. Like, he's it the doesn't Silver matter. Fox and Jennifer Holland is very lucky. Yes, yes they're, that's they're right. both very lucky people. They're yeah. both beautiful people. But congratulations to James Gunn as well on top of that. But on top of the fact that it was so incredibly successful, the biggest thing for original they've done. I don't think it's a small thing to also take a look at and re remind ourselves that it grew enormously from when it premiered to when the finale came. And like Gator in the email suggested, this is once again more proof that the week-by-week -week release strategy is far superior despite the fact that I am myself a binger and I like sitting down and having every episode there. But if they had dropped Peacemaker all at once, it would have dropped, a bunch of people would have watched it, talked about it for a couple of days, and then poof, it would have been gone. It would have been disappeared out of the zeitgeist. Instead, people watched it, buzzed about it. 
The next week it came out again. People buzzed again and then buzzed again another week and then buzzed again another week, giving it tons of time for people to hear that buzz, feel that buzz, and want to jump on the train. And the result was this incredible growth that we got with Peacemaker. Because if this thing had dropped all at once, it would not have this level of success. It just wouldn't have. It took week after week after week of people seeing it, buzzing about it, talking about it, spreading the word about how damn good this show is. Yep. And the results were incredible. So again, a big congratulations to these guys, and and I'm super thrilled for them. I'm so glad. I This must be what Ray feels like, seeing how many people liked Uncharted. Because like me, like I didn't know if people were loving Peacemaker as much as me at all. So seeing that this many people are jumping on board with it, embracing it, loving it, embrace the dove of peace and you know I, i'm gonna get a tattoo of it on my arm somewhere i'm not really I, I, i'm not cool enough to pull off tattoos but anyway i like it chris you see number one this record-setting performance by the finale number two the growth that the series had week by week what are the things that stand out to you here definitely the weekly release schedule I think that is king here, right? You want to be part of the zeitgeist, when, and that's what works for television. You want to be around the proverbial water cooler and go, what should I be watching? Oh, that's what I should be watching? Let's talk about it. Let's have conversations. Let's have a YouTube show about it and talk about it, you know? <laughs> we, we want to be part of the conversation, and by releasing things in this nice, slow trickle weekly, we're going to give something legs. Because otherwise, you have, you know, I brought it up before, you've got the you situation. I watched all of you, and I'm never going to talk about what happened in that season ever again, yeah. except for the day where I turned to Logan and went, huh, okay, that's neat. <laughs> certain shows, certainly I want to watch in a binge format. I keep waiting on Servant, which is released week by week, but I want to binge that all at once so I can only feel uncomfortable for a day. But things like <laughs> Peacemaker, I think they did a really, really smart thing by giving us this slow burn, allowing word of mouth to really carry this show and get everyone involved. My friends who aren't comic book fans and my friends who didn't like Suicide Squad love this show. Yeah. They're all in. Rob, uh, you're seeing the kind of results that Peacemaker had. I, I Listen, as much as I know people have been writing in and talking about and buzzing about Peacemaker on this show, I was not seeing these record numbers coming in. I, I didn't think it would do that. And then you look at that impressive growth chart at that. What out of all this stands out to you? What What's remarkable to you? Well, I think the thing that I love the most is I believe in a tourist vision and in this this is the most probably the most James Gunn of all James Gunn things we've ever got and there's been a lot of those things whether we talk about Slither and Super on the show Tromeo and Juliet the Dawn of the Dead remake that he wrote Scooby-Doo uh, and then of course Suicide Squad but this this seemed to be uncut James Gunn and the fact that it worked and it found an audience means that the studios are going to look for more auteurist visions and indeed we'll get more from James Gunn, which is always great. But I think this is the kind of entertainment people like. They like to feel that there is an author behind these things and you're getting a vision that only they can bring to you. And I think that's increasingly rare in Hollywood today. Not only that, but this show has given me an easy Halloween costume. If I forget to get a Halloween costume, all I need is a plastic butterfly and a trickle of blood. I put the butterfly in my mouth, trickle of blood, and I am a witty Halloween costume guy <laughs> right away. It just felt like uh, launching with a couple of episodes, whether it's two or three episodes at once, seems to be a very winning formula because you're giving the audience a big sample size to get them started off with. Because they, I think these TV, the streamers understand that you've got to get the audience hooked with their first experience with the show. And maybe that takes more than one episode. So drop two, drop three, and then go week to week, get them on. So that seems to have been a strategy that worked with them very well too. I've also heard some people saying that like, you know, well, Book of Boba Fett should have dropped all at once. Well, you're wrong. No, it shouldn't have. And the numbers proved it. Because the book of Boba Fett ended up getting more viewers in its finale than the finale of Mandalorian did, mm -hmm. season one or season two. Now that's and that would not have happened had they dropped it all at once. Now, would I have preferred as an individual viewer to sit down and watch that show all at once? Yes, I probably would have liked that as a viewer. But from a business point of view and what was best for the show, clearly that worked for it very very well and it's it's a strategy that worked for them so again I, I think this is incredible stuff congratulations to them on this the numbers prove it all out and uh, it's absolutely fantastic so congratulations questions for you guys 
What do you think about this whole thing about what Peacemaker was able to do? Number one, the fact that it broke all these HBO Max records. Number two, the fact that it had such growth from episode one all the way down to episode, the final episode that they aired, 44% growth. How do you feel about it? Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, we want to take a minute and thank the sponsor of today's video, the good folks at Keeps. Now look, you guys probably already know that two out of every three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're just 35 years old. Now that's where Keeps comes in because Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. That means the guys that use it love it. Keeps offers a simple, affordable, and stress-free way to keep your hair. It's also low cost. Treatments start as low as just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions for the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. That means treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. Keeps has everything your hair needs, delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. Remember, prevention is the key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so the sooner you act, the better. When it comes to your hair, save more, spend less with Keeps. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Campia to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Campia to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Campia.